exfiltrating documents to Dropbox, this time on Hack 5. Hello, welcome to Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen, and today we are going to be liberating documents from an unsuspecting Windows box, because it's important to back up your data. And we're going to do so to Dropbox because that was the inspiration of the comment from Jim Cola 99 Buchanan, who says he'd like to see a payload that exfiltrates the documents over Dropbox. And hey, I think this is a fantastic follow-up to our single-staged PowerShell wallpaper changer of doom from last week that brought its own second stage with its internet connection kind of thing with the Bash Bunny and the attack mode Ethernet. We're not doing any of that today. No, instead we're going to build a payload that will run on a duck or a bunny and it will inject keystrokes that will use a stager to run some PowerShell and exfiltrate those documents to liberate them to our Dropbox. Uh, and I think this is a really fun proof of concept of ways to exfiltrate loot. I love various ways. We've done it over FTP, SMB, USB, now. Dropbox, why not, right? And uh, this is a fun proof of concept, so let, let's just dive right in. Essentially, what we're going to craft here is a, a first stage payload, and that's just going to be a little bit of uh, keystroke injection code that is going to tell the computer, hey, go download and execute this file. This file is going to be a PowerShell script, which is much longer than what we would want to type in manually, which is why we're going to use a second stage. Uh, and that is going to be hosted at Dropbox. So really, there's only ever communications between the victim and Dropbox, which is kind of innocuous. Uh, and then that second stage will execute in PowerShell. And what it's going to do is going to go ahead and harness all of those files from the documents folder on the uh, computer. And it's going to go ahead and upload them straight over to Dropbox. And then we win. That's, that's pretty much it. Uh, so this is a fun little proof of concept. Let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing that we'll need to do to craft this is to create a Dropbox app using the API. So I'll put links in the description uh, for all of this, but essentially what you do is you head over to this pretty little page over here and you create a new Dropbox API app and then you give it a uh, app folder and then you name the app folder. I've done that before with PSXFIL. We'll call it Xfiltrate. And then you click Create App. After that, we're going to go ahead and assign it a, uh, an access token. So this access token is going to allow our application to go ahead and uh, speak doot 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 to this app, to this folder. And so we'll just go ahead and copy that. And we'll be using this later in our, uh, in our app. And that's pretty much it. Once you do this, you'll find in an apps folder on Dropbox uh, a, um, a new folder with this name, in this case, Exfiltrate, that we're going to go ahead and be able to uh, host all of our stuff. Now, I've already gone ahead and done that. And you'll see here, oh yeah, dark theme. Uh, in my PSXFIL directory here, I have this uh, xfil.ps1. So let's take a look at this PowerShell and get that guy down here, make him a little bit bigger. So essentially what this is going to do is this is the PowerShell in the second stage that's going to run. And the first thing that I'd like to do is create a archive. See, the thing is, this this is all huge. You know, we could, we could make this a, a single stage and type all of this out but it wouldn't fit in the Windows run line. And because of that, and because I love little one-liners because they are pretty impervious to errors, uh, it means that you know it's gonna run faster. And since we're already making an internet connection to Dropbox to upload the files anyway, then what's the harm in also downloading all of the PowerShell? There's lots of fun ways to, to get around this as well. And we're gonna dive into esoteric ways to, to make this a lot prettier. But as a proof of concept, I think it's kind of fun. All right, so look at our PowerShell. Uh, essentially, we're going to compress an archive. Uh, where is that? Well, it's going to be dollar sign env in PowerShell is saying, hey, an environment variable named user profile. That's going to be, in this case, c colon backslash users, backslash the name of the users, and then we're going to add on slash documents, slash asterisk. So basically, the entire documents folder. The compression level, I'm setting to no compression so that it'll happen very quickly. Uh, the destination path is going to be another environment variable, which is TMP. That's uh, you know the temporary directory that everybody has write access to. 
and then we're going to give the file a name, which will again be the environment variable for username, dash, and then a, I'm using the get date function to give me, you know, the year, month, day. So I will have a nice little file name that ends in .zip. Great. The rest of this is uh, some snippets that I've found and put together that will essentially allow you to um, to upload to Dropbox. And what it does is, you know, we set an argument with the actual path of the uh, file. You have to specify the, the, the target, which is the target is actually where it's going to be hosted in that application. So in this case, slash, and then we give it that same file name, right? So this slash in this case is the slash in that Dropbox application that we just created. Whereas the source file is where we just put this uh, zip file, which uh, we hid in TMP. Right? We could actually you know, do this a lot better by just enumerating through every single file, but again, proof of concept. It illustrates the point, I feel like. Uh, the authorization bit here, you're going to have to adjust for yours. So it's bearer plus, and then this is the actual key that we generated for our Dropbox application. The rest of it is defining headers. And so these headers here tell, hey, this is an, uh, an, app, an octet stream and it's using this Dropbox API argument, which is all of that good stuff, as well as you know our authorization. Uh, and then when that's all done, essentially what we're gonna do is, it's kind of like an invoke web request, except backwards, and it's a uh, invoke rest method. We pass it a URI, which is just like we would do with IWR invoke web request when we're downloading, but instead we're uploading. So where are we uploading to? We're uploading to content dropboxapi.com slash two slash file slash upload, and we're doing a post. So the HTTP method here is a post, and then we specify the actual file that we're posting. In this case, it is that zip file, and then we go ahead and pass on those headers, and when it's all said and done, it just ends by deleting that zip file. So not a whole lot there, uh, but it gets the job done. And so now you're thinking, all right, cool. So we've got our second stage and it's going to live on Dropbox. Now clearly we're going to need to craft a payload with the single stage that will get us to orbit. And let's go ahead and take a look because I already have the Bash Bunny plugged in in arming mode. Again, this would be exactly the same if we were to do it on uh, the USB rubber ducky. I'm just using a Bash Bunny because it's a little easier. Uh, so if we head over to our bunny box, you'll notice doo -doo 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 -doo, I've got my bash bunny and I've already kind of uh, got the turkey in the oven here as it were uh, under payloads switch position one and I have my proof of concept payload which I'll go ahead and put up on the GitHub and essentially you'll see all right so this is the Dropbox exfiltrator standard kind of stuff here. We do an LED setup while we're setting our attack mode to hid for the keystroke injection and then our LED to attack so we know what it's doing. It's gonna go ahead and issue that good old uh, keystroke GUI R or Windows key R, pull up the run line, wait just a moment, and then it's gonna quack this string of text. So essentially it's gonna say PowerShell, uh, window hidden, uh, no P, no I, and execution bypass. And then of course notice that because we're using bash, uh, we have to go ahead and um, escape some of these characters. So we've escaped our quotation marks, we've escaped our dollar sign, we've escaped our backslash, and don't forget, you have to escape semicolons. But with all of that said, what this is essentially going to do is we specify a new variable for E to, again, that temporary directory, and then E.ps1. And then we're gonna do an invoke web request, right? That's the alias for that. And we're going to download the file. Now this is specific to my xfil.ps1, and you're going to get that on your own machine by coming over to your xfil.ps1, right click and say copy Dropbox link. And that's going to give you a, uh, a dedicated link to this file. Now by default, it's gonna give you, you know, a, a URL like this, but it's gonna end with question mark uh, DL equals zero. And we don't want that. So that's actually going to give you an HTML page. So if you try to just like W get that or curl or in this case IWR to download this in the command line, it's going to be a bunch of HTML and that's not going to be uh, very happy. So you'll just want to go ahead and change that to a one so you'll actually get the file. Now the taco is the output. Where are we going to save it? Well, we're going to save it to dollar sign $E, which we specified before. And then the very last thing we do is IEX, which is to say, hey, execute this file. What file are we going to execute? And dollar sign $E. And then that, so this is the part that literally just executes that whole PowerShell XFIL file that we had created before. 
And then the last bit is a little bit of cleanup and we actually just go ahead and remove it. And there's a lot more we could do to finesse this, uh, but it illustrates the point that, hey, this was hosted in PowerShell, or it's hosted on Dropbox, and now it's on our machine and running. We quack enter, it's gonna go ahead and flash up for just a second, it's gonna be a window hidden, so it's gonna disappear, it's gonna run in the background, and then it's going to end by doing a nice little LED finish. So we can see a green flashing LED of happiness that our payload of Exfiltration Doom has finished. So with all of that, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's run this and uh, see our results. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and safely eject this guy, pop it in switch position one, and run our payload. And that was it. So unfortunately, there's not a whole lot to see here. We're gonna come back around and take a look at the results uh, and see line by line what this does so we truly understand it. But if we look at our Dropbox receiving computer right now, immediately we just got this new file and it says, hey, we've got the username and then the date. And if I go ahead and extract that, you'll see, haha, I have the contents of my documents folder, which includes um, a copy of Doom shareware because, you know, who doesn't love playing Doom? All right, so what did all of that actually do? I feel like it's really important to understand. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop back in our bunny box and take a look at this uh, exfiltration. So it's still left in the run line, which of course we could get rid of, but uh, we ran that and you see that, hey, where are those backslashes? They're gone because they were escaped, right? So we ran all of this which downloaded our file. Now I wanna run this again, except this time, I wanna take out that window hidden so we can actually see this happening. So go ahead and run that. And you're seeing it's compressing the archive, it's doing the web request. And now you see it's actually uploading the data. And then that last little bit before it died was it saying, hey, it uploaded, here's the response. And um, you know now I have the file again okay cool let's go through it a little bit more uh, so if we were to just open up PowerShell just as before except without the actual commands uh, and actually we'll just go ahead and run the commands that we would have otherwise received in uh, in PowerShell uh, with the second stage which is to say hey let's compress this archive boom Stu a stupid simple and then the rest of it is to go ahead and set our different headers and our different variables. And that's nice because it means that we can use these. Uh, so if we were to iterate on this, we could just continuously update, say, these headers by doing a headers dot, I think it's remove or delete, to go ahead and delete the, um, I guess, the, the source file here. And uh, I think which, which ends up in the argument, which ends up in this. So this is the header that we would iterate through if we were to do this for every single file instead of uh, zipping it all up. Uh, and then finally, the last bit is to just go ahead and do our inv invoke web request, or sorry, not invoke web request, our invoke rest method to do that HTTP post and we'll see that it's writing and again, we have the file. So, you know, that's pretty much it. It's a fun little payload. You can uh, go ahead and modify this to your heart's content. I'll have links in the description for where you can nab this and create your own. Uh, and I look forward to hearing all sorts of awesome feedback from this. Now, in just a bit, we're going to get into our Hack5 Gear giveaway. But first, we're going to take a moment to thank our awesome sponsor. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names hosting an email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. All right, now mad props to Jim Cola 99 Buchanan who uh, left a comment inspiring this payload. I love doing these little proof of concepts, and so I'll be reaching out to get you the Hack Five Hundred Dollar Gift Card. So if you would like to win some Techno Bucks and get yourself a Bash Bunny or Wi-Fi Pineapple or any of the great gear over at hack5.org. Go ahead and leave a comment below. I would like to see what you have in terms of ideas on how to expand on this proof of concept and make it a bit better. I'm kind of looking for some PowerShell love here. Uh, so go ahead and leave a comment below. And 
if uh, oh, also the full details to the contest are linked in the description as well and if you're new to the channel welcome like subscribe all that jazz with that i'm darren kitchen trust your techno lust <laughs>